What up guys, my name's Phil and welcome to BeginnerDJLessons.com This channel is all about helping people who are starting out DJing get better at DJing. I'm very aware that most people who start DJing will probably be intrigued and start downloading computer programs before they get their first pair of DJ decks. So with that in mind, I'm going to teach you the basics of beat matching using nothing but a laptop today and DJ Pro 2 by Algorithm. Let's do it. Boom! Okay guys, before we get into it, let me just say, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button now for more weekly videos just like this. Also, if you're interested in learning everything you need to know about DJ Pro 2 by Algorithm, I've got a full training program on just this one program. I'll put a link to it underneath this video. Okay guys, so I'm gonna give you a quick explanation just in case this is your very, very first introduction to DJing. In this video, I'm gonna teach you an exercise which is gonna help you beat match. So, to break down DJing in the most basic way I can, it's all about having one track playing, lining another track up, and then blending this track into this track and then taking away this track here. A very popular technique and probably the most fundamental technique you need to learn when you DJ is called beat matching. I'm gonna be using Dead Mouse tracks today because they've all got very prominent drum beats. I'm gonna get two tracks of the same speed, line up the beats so they're beating at exactly the same time, and then we're gonna bring one track up and take one track away in a kind of creative way which blends them nicely rather than just going volume down, volume up, and I'm gonna teach you how to do that. Okay guys, so I've got three cameras recording. This camera, I'm recording my screen, and I'm also GoProing what I do with the keys. The first thing I wanna show you is some shortcuts that are really important to DJing on a laptop. Otherwise, you're restricted to just the mouse pad, which is really tricky because you need to be doing several things at once, which is why you need to know these shortcuts. Number one over here will start and stop track A, or the left-hand deck. Zero will do the same for the right-hand deck. The next thing you really need to know about is how to loop the left hand deck or the right hand deck. Now a loop, as you can imagine, is just something you put on and it plays over and over and it loops a section of the song. So if you wanna do that, it's A for the left hand deck. So if it was playing now, and I pressed A. It loops that little bit of the song. Same thing on the right hand side is L, so. If I put the song to here and I clicked L, you can see there's this blue section here. Like that. If you wanna make the loop smaller, you'll click S or D over here on the left hand track or K or J on the right hand track and it would make it smaller. If you wanted to make the loop bigger, you click Alt S and D or Alt K or J. So I'll just show you on the left hand deck, okay? Loop on, smaller, or bigger. Okay, perfect. So you know how to start, stop, and loop a track. The next thing you need to know about is cue points. A cue point is basically being able to take a track, get to the point of the track you want to start from, setting that point and then the Q button will always start the track from that point. So if you come to DJ Pro 2, you'll notice there's Q points here. Click this button and go to the three Q points like this. Now, when you get to a point of the song you want, so let's say it's from here, take the loop off. So, from, so let's say this is the point of the song you want to cue from. You have to click this button here and it will set a red marker to align with this cue point here. To go from this point, you need to click W. Now you'll notice as soon as I take my finger off W, it snaps back to that same point. If you want it to continue playing, you have to hold W down and while you've got W held down, you click the one button, which remember was the start or stop. So you do this. 
and it will continue to play until you stop the song. Over here, the button is U. So you'd go to a point in the song like this. You'd set the cue point and you hold down U. But if you wanted to keep the song playing, you click U and then you click zero and you can take your hands away. It's a really important thing when it comes to beat matching, which we're gonna do in a second. So those are the main keyboard shortcuts that you're gonna need to know when it comes to beat matching, which is what I'm gonna teach you now. Okay, so let's just talk quickly about beat matching. Beat matching is essentially getting two beat drums or the kick drum of the track, which is the main driving force of most tracks, lined up on top of each other. So they're both hitting at the same time. So both tracks are going boom, boom, boom. Then you bring in track B and take away track A, or you'd bring in track A and take away track B. Because remember, all DJing really is, is having one track playing, get another track lined up with a cue point that you want, line them up, get them playing at the same time, bring one track in, take the other track away, and it'll feel like it's just one continuous song because the two beats are playing at the same time. So the two tracks we're gonna be using today are two Dead Mouse tracks. I use Dead Mouse as an example because typically his intros and outros are really long, which gives us lots of time. The main thing you have to remember when you're picking two tracks, particularly as a beginner, if you're doing this for the first time, is to pick two songs that are the same speed and the same key because they'll sound really good when they go together. You can use the same tracks as me if you want. On the right, on the left hand side, I've got Strobe, and on the right hand side, I've got Four Wear by Dead Mouse. Both are 128 BPM, and both are in the key of B. So they're gonna sound really good when they go together. If you wanna learn more about mixing and key, I've got a video up here, which will teach you everything you need to know about it. If you look at the track, you'll see there's these lines. Every four, you'll see there's a thicker yellow line. This indicates a bar. So this would be one bar, this would be two bars. We're gonna go to the beginning of a yellow line and we're gonna put the end of the track on loop. So we've got, we've got as much time as we want. So you're gonna click A and we're gonna make sure it's over four bars, which I think this is only over two bars. We're gonna make it four. So you click Alt and D, then it makes it four bars in length. So if we play it, you'll see that it loops, but it sounds good because it's over four bars. It'll just sound like an endless continuation of the same song. Second bar, third bar. So you typically at the end of track A, bring in the beginning of track B, but we've got the end of track A just endlessly looping. So we've got as much time as we need and we don't have to quickly beat match before the time runs out. Similarly, we're gonna go to the beginning of track B, which is four wear, and we're gonna put another loop on. So we've got as much time as we want. This is something I definitely recommend you do if you're new to doing this. Now, to give you an idea, this section here is all the intro to this song. And at the end of this, it goes into the main body of the song. So if I was to play it from here. And then it goes into the main body of the song. But what I like to do is go three or four bars back into the intro beat. So let's count them. So this would be one bar two bar, three bar, four bar. I'm going to put a cue point here by clicking that button there. And I'm gonna also put this on a loop. So I'm gonna press L to loop it. It's only over two bars. I'm gonna put it over four bars. So you click Alt and K. So right now we've got the end of strobe or track A looped and the beginning of track B looped. As soon as we've bought in track B and taken away track A, we can take off the loop and it'll go into the main body of the song, which is a really good place to go if you're a beginner and you just wanna get your head around this. So those are the positions you wanna do with any tracks you use. Now, the next thing we wanna talk about is actually getting the two tracks lined up. So you're gonna have track A playing and you're gonna bring in track B and you want the beats to line up with each other. So the question is, when we've got track A playing, how do we beat match track B so they're going at the same time? 
Well, this is where cue points come in. Now, the beauty of the cue point is I can begin to tap along to track A by just doing this. If I have both volumes up, which it currently does, this volume is all the way up, this volume is all the way up, and this slide is dead in the middle. If I press track A and tap along, you'll hear me tapping along to track A with track B by using this cue point. And what you then do is once you've got them lined up, you hold down the U button once you think you've got it to the beat. And then you press the zero and take your hands away and the two tracks will play at the same time. So I'm just going to do this first time round with the volumes all the way up so you can hear everything that's happening. The other thing I do need to note, you want to press play when the yellow bars line up with each other. Because basically it's all to do with how songs are written, but you want the bars to be lined up with each other. So you want to hit that U button and press play when the two bars are lined up. So, here we go. I'm just going to beat match by clicking U, tapping along, and when I see that bar line up with each other, I hold it down, press a zero, and take my hands away, and the track should be near enough beat matched. Here we go. So you see, I kind of did it there, but what you'll notice is they were ever so slightly off. In fact, you can still see it here, it's slightly apart. This is where these little nudge buttons come in, the plus or the minus, where you can just ever so slightly speed or slow a track down. Now, if you had DJ decks, you'd use the rings, the outer rings of your DJ decks to do this, but on a computer, you can just use these. So I'm gonna press play at the same time, and I'm gonna use these buttons to line them up perfectly. You can see they're now lined up perfectly. So, once they're lined up perfectly, you've essentially done your first beat match. However, you can probably tell it sounds terrible with the two tracks playing at the same volume. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to bring down the volume of track B beforehand. And we're also going to take away the highs and the mids of track B. So the only thing that's playing is the low or the thump, the kick drum. So just to kind of show you what that would sound like, I'm going to bring down track A completely and just play track B with only the lows playing. You'll hear that it's only the kick drum playing. Now we're going to do the same thing with track A at full volume track B at about half volume with only the lows playing, okay? And I'm going to get that beat match going. Once the beat match is going, I'm then going to bring the volume higher and higher on track B until they're both basically the same volume, but you've only really got the kick drum or the lows of track B playing. But it all starts with making sure that the kick drum of track B sits underneath track A, because that's the main body of it. Let's do this. The two tracks are now lined up, but they're not perfect, so I'm going to nudge it along a bit. I've now got the two tracks playing perfectly underneath each other. Perfectly. I'm now going to bring up the volume of track B. I can now hear the two kick drums playing at the same time, so I'm going to take away the lows of track A. I'm now going to bring in some of the mids and highs of track A, and as soon as I begin to hear them, I'm going to take away the same amount of volume from the mids and highs of track A. Bring in some of the highs. Take away some more of the highs with track A. Take away all the highs. 
bring in the rest of the mids. Now we've only got track B playing and I'm going to take off the volume completely and I'm going to take the loop off. And it went straight into track B. So basically guys, I know I've tried to explain this and it may seem a bit complicated, but what you're doing is bringing in the kick drum of track B underneath track A, then blending in some of the mids and some of the highs of track B while taking away the mids and highs from track A. And what you're doing is blending and just making it sound really pleasant. It'll just sound like one song is very pleasantly merging into the next. I'm going to do it one more time and this time I'm not going to speak at all so you can just listen to everything I'm doing. Okay, let's do it. We did it, it's very fiddly. Now, as you'll notice, there's lots of going back and forth and adding a little bit, and you just have to do this by the your ears really, guys. Add in a little bit, take a little bit away. Obviously, if you've got DJ decks, you can do this at the same time with those knobs in the middle, but here, you're kind of restricted to just using your mouse pad. So it's kind of a lot of going back and forth to try and get that fluid sound. But that is essentially it. That is the technique you would want to use if you wanted to get your head around beat matching on your laptop. It's a basic exercise. It's all about queuing up, tapping along, pressing play, making sure the two songs line up perfectly, and then beginning to blend one song into the next using the techniques I just showed you. Guys, I hope I explained that well, and I hope this video helps. And hopefully, if you haven't got any DJ decks yet, this is a good little exercise for you to practice with, getting your head around beat matching on a laptop before you get your first set of decks. If you guys are brand new to DJing and you want to know more, I've got a full DJ course at beginnerdjlessons.com where you can go and you can learn everything you need to know about DJing. Finally, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more weekly videos just like this. Thanks for watching, guys. See you guys next week. Whoosh. <laughs>